The Christmas Miracle of Jonathan Tooney, part one. The village children called him Mr Gloomy, but in fact his name was Tooney, Mr Jonathan Tooney. And though it's not kind to call people names, this one fitted quite well, for Jonathan Tooney sowed and smiled and never laughed. He went about mumbling and grumbling, muttering and spluttering, grumping and gripping. He complained that the church bells rang too often, that the birds sang too shrilly, and that the children played too loudly. Mr Toomey was a woodcarver. Some said he was the best woodcarver in the whole valley. He spent his days sitting in a work bank bench, carving beautiful shapes from blocks of pine and hickory and chestnut wood. After supper, he sat in a straight back chair near the fireplace, smoking his pipe and staring into the flames. Jonathan Toomey wasn't an old man, but if you saw him, you might think he was. The way that he bent forwards with his head down. You wouldn't notice his eyes, the clear blue of the August sky, and you wouldn't see the dimple on his chin, since his face was mostly hidden under a shaggy, untrimmed beard, speckled with sawdust and wood shavings, and, depending on what he'd eaten that day, the crumbs of bread or a bit of potato or dried gravy. The village people didn't know it, but there was a reason for his gloom, a reason for his grumbling, and a reason why he walked hunched over, as if carrying a great weight on his shoulders. Some years earlier, when Jonathan Toomey was a young and full of life and full of love, his wife and baby had become very ill, and because those were the days before hospitals and medicines and skilled doctors, his wife and baby had died three days apart from each other. So Jonathan Toomey had packed his belongings into a wagon and travelled till his tears stopped. He settled into a tiny house at the edge of a village to do his wood carving. One day in early December, there was a knock at Jonathan's door. Mumbling and grumbling, he went to answer it. There stood a woman and a young boy. I'm Widow McDowell. I'm new to your village. This is my son, Thomas, the woman said. I'm seven and I know how to whistle, said Thomas. Oh, whistling is pish posh, said the woodcarver gruffly. I need something carved, said the woman, and she told Jonathan about a very special set of Christmas figures her grandfather had carved for her when she was a girl. After I moved here, I discovered that they were lost, she explained. I had hoped that by some miracle I would find them again, but it hasn't happened. There are no such things as miracles, the woodcarver told her. Now could you describe the figures for me? There were sheep, she told him. Two of them with curly wool, added Thomas. Yes, two, said the widow, and a cow, an angel, Mary, Joseph, the baby Jesus and wise men. Three of them, added Thomas. Will you take the job? asked the widow McDowell. I will. I'm grateful. How soon can you have them ready? They will be ready when they're ready, he said. But I must have them by Christmas. They mean very much to me. I can't remember a Christmas without them. Christmas is pish posh, said Jonathan gruffly, and he shut the door. The following week, there was a knock at the woodcarver's door. Muttering and spluttering, he went to answer it. There stood the widow McDowell and Thomas. Excuse me, said the widow, but Thomas has been begging to come and watch you work. He said he wants to be a woodcarver when he grows up and would like to watch you since you are the best in the valley. I'll be quiet. You won't even know I'm here. Please, 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 piped up Thomas. With a grumble, the woodcarver stepped aside to let them in. He pointed to a stall near his workbench. No talking, no jiggling, no noise, he ordered Thomas. The widow McDowell handed Mr Toomey a warm loaf of cornbread as a token of thanks. Then she took out her knitting and sat down in a rocking chair in the far corner of the cottage. Not there, bellowed the woodcarver. No one sits in that chair. So she moved to the straight black chair by the fire. Thomas sat very still. Once he needed to sneeze, he pressed a finger under his nose to hold it back. Once, when he wanted desperately to scratch his leg, he counted to twenty to keep his mind off the itch. After a very long time, Thomas cleared his throat and whispered, Mr Toomey, may I ask a question? The woodcarver glared at Thomas, then shrugged his shoulders and grunted. 
Thomas decided that meant yes, so he went on. Is that my sheep you're carving? The woodcarder nodded and grunted again. After a very long time, Thomas whispered, Mr Toomey, excuse me, but, but you're carving my sheep wrong. The widow McDowell was knitting needles, stopped clicking. Jonathan Toomey's knife stopped carving. Thomas went on, it's a beautiful sheep, nice and curly, <coughs> but my sheep looked happy. Oh, that's pish posh, said Mr Toomey. Sheep are sheep, they can't look happy. Mine did, answered Thomas. They knew they were with the baby Jesus, so they were happy. After that, Thomas was quiet for the rest of the afternoon. When the church bells chimed six o'clock, Mr Toomey grumbled under his breath about the awful noise. The widow McDowell said it was time to leave. Thomas sneezed three times, then thanked the woodcarver for allowing him to watch. That evening, after a supper of cornbread and boiled potatoes, the woodcarver sat down at his bench. He picked up his knife, he picked up the sheep. He worked until his eyelids dropped shut. A few days later, there was a knock at the woodcarver's door. Griping and grumbling, he went to answer it. There stood the widow and her son. May I watch again? I will be quiet, said Thomas. He settled himself on the stool very quietly, while his mother laid a basket of sweet-smelling raisin buns on the table. The teapot is warm, Mr Toomey said gruffly. His head bent over his work. Okay, and I'll read the rest to you tomorrow. Have a good sleep. Bye.